Well, my name is Cameron Wallner. I'm going to be um, filling in for Pastor Mike today, and I get the incredible opportunity to work in this kids' ministry, and then I also uh, serve in the worship band here, and it is just uh, super fun. So um, before we get started, um, can anyone handle a Ronald Reagan story or a joke? You better, because it's coming. <laughs> So this one's about a, a fella who was driving down the country road when all of a sudden he looks out and here's a chicken. He was doing about 45 and the chicken was running alongside. So he stepped on the gas, got it up to about 55. The chicken caught back up with him and was right there beside him again. And he thought that as he was looking at it that the chicken had three legs. But before he could make up his mind for sure, the chicken ran out in front of him at 60 miles an hour, turned down the land into a barnyard. Well. He made a quick turn and turned down into the barnyard too and there was a farmer standing there and he asked me and he said, did a chicken come past? He says, yeah. Well, he said, am I crazy or did the chicken have three legs? He said, yep, it's mine. I breed three-legged chickens. The fellow said, well, why is that? Well, he said, I like the drumsticks. Ma likes the drumsticks. and other little kid likes the drumsticks and we just got tired of fighting over them. <laughs> and the fellow asked, well, how does it taste? He said, I don't know, I haven't been able to catch one. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, so um, I grew up actually on a Hutterite colony, um, just north of Valeria called Birch Creek, and I left when I was uh, very young, not for, you know, religious reasons, I just wanted to get out. And um, eventually I joined the oil field, I was 19, Worked my first hitch on a drilling rig during Christmas, super cold. So in other words, I got the, it was a rude awakening for a 19-year-old. But um, do we have these pictures, Wayne? So I'm going to be sharing a couple of pictures with you, because on the drilling rig, I actually, um, I learned how to cuss on the drilling rig. But trust me, God used it for good. God turned it around. <laughs> So, so, and I got saved in the drilling rig. So drilling rigs and oil field will always have a special place in my heart. So that's a, a picture of the drilling rig I worked on. This is more for the men. I know the women are probably like, we don't care about that stuff, but whatever. Here it is. <laughs> All right, next picture. This is kind of what we do. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but the... Um, the building in the back, in the background there, the, the green building, it had um, four huge caterpillar engines in there. And the heat those things would put off, like through the radiator, it was just like unbearable sometimes. So I built myself a little roof because I was working there. And my friend Zach comes along and just decides he was just gonna chill there for a little bit. <laughs> uh, next one, please. Um, as you can tell, well, it's kind of hard to see. This is one of our floor hands. Um, you get very dirty there. His coveralls are probably like 20 pounds soaked in oil and diesel fuel and all kinds of junk. Um, next one. So that's where I would work a lot of the time. 130 feet up in the air, um, pulling back pipe. The view was awesome, and after I got saved, that's where I would uh, worship God up there. Um, next one. Yeah, so that's kind of a picture of your rope. That's your weapon up there. But like I said, man, the view was just awesome. After you get saved, you know, you're just like so inspired and you see the sunrise and, and you're just in awe that now, you know, kind of everything makes a lot more sense. Um, but this next picture is the one I want to talk about. So that's my friend Johnny. Like I said, I, I'm from a Hutterite colony and my grandpa, he did tell me Bible stories when I was young, but as far as a relationship with God, I didn't really have one, even though there was times when I prayed and they came from my heart, but um, it was all oil, um, not oil-based, <laughs> thinking oil field. It was all works-based. You know, you have to perform for God. The moment you stop performing, that's when, you know, you work your way to heaven, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But, you know, we are saved by grace through faith. But anyways... He heard that I'm somewhat, uh, you know, religious background or have some uh, knowledge about the Bible. And um, he made me memorize Romans 10, 13. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. So uh, we were like brothers. I'm like, ah, Johnny, I'll just recognize it so that he stops asking me about it. So anyway, he, he kept asking me and, and finally this verse got stuck in my head. And then shortly after, 
you know, the Holy Spirit just bore witness to me because I already knew that there is a God, like we all do. And the Holy Spirit just bore witness, and a year later I got saved. And um, now, uh, six years later, here I am. And man, it's just a, it's a life of victorious. You know, it's not easy sometimes, but it's like uh, Paul and Silas in prison, in prison. You know, you might be going through some crazy stuff, but you're going to be praised and you're going to have joy in all the seasons. You know, through the Spirit, we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, happiness. So that's the, the thing I've noticed about the Christian life. No matter what season you're in, you can always have this joy. It's always, always available for you. So get rid of my gum. We've done a long time ago. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what I want to talk about today is um, you can't live an experience alone. You need revelation knowledge of the Word of God. And what I mean by that is I'm sure I would assume most of us in here have had some sort of experience where we encounter God, whether it was, you know, during worship or you went to some Christian event and you just, you know, had an encounter with God just being in his presence. Um, if we have any junior high or high school kids, they, a lot of them encounter God at Glacier Bible Camp. And it's awesome, you know, having, having that experience. But if you just live on that experience, eventually it's gonna fade away. And we're gonna like get down into this dry season and we're going to need another experience. And, and it's just like up and down. It seems like there's no consistency. And, and even worse, after that experience, sometimes it seems like the things that we got delivered from, like, try to come back into our life. And it's scary. And some of us are probably like, well, those things, they kind of have crept back into my life. And I don't know what's going on. Well, if you do not understand that experience, in other words, if after you get that experience, if you do not go to the Bible... And, and find that experience in the revelation of God, it's just a matter of time before you lose it. I guess what I'm trying to say is this, whatever you experience from God, you will lose if you don't get the revelation or if you don't get the knowledge that enables you to maintain it. Second Peter first three, if you wanna put that up for me. It says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his, his own glory and goodness. And man, that, that just like changed things for me. When you read, it's all things that pretend to uh, a godly life have, have been given us through the knowledge of knowing Jesus. So I'm not, I'm not against experiences, but like you kind of you need to understand them. And we're going to get into that uh, a little bit here. And the good news is, if, if you have experienced that, or if you are in that season, you just feel like dry, burned out, it, you know, and, and we're not, if we're not careful sometimes, sometimes we'll start, in a way, blaming God for it. Oh, God, give me more faith, you know, give me more this. And he has already given everything that he can give. You know, he has given us his spirit, his son. The thing of it is, we're trying to change in a way that he has not ordained. So we're going to be looking at this. Uh, John 7.37 says... Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow uh, from within them. So that is my prayer today. And also to kind of help you see that the Christian life is not a dried out, out life where you go down into the valley and then up on the hill again. Like we need a little bit more consistency. And it's possible, you know, you just look at the life of Jesus. So um, if you actually, you can turn to Matthew 4, 1 through 7. I think we're going to have it up here as well. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. So this is after uh, Jesus got led into the wilderness. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Wow, talk about an understatement. Like the Bible just like hasn't eaten for 40 days, now he's hungry. <laughs> now when the uh, tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. I gotta get my water.
But Jesus, he answered him, he said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I mean, this right here is kind of already saying what I want to say. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, draw yourself down for it is written. He should give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And it's just awesome. You know, if you, um, if you open up to that scripture and you start focusing in on it, Twice the devil said, if you are the son of God. And then if you back up one chapter, so that we met you for, in the last verse, Jesus was in the Jordan River getting baptized by John. And a voice, an audible voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And you know, you, you could probably go about this different ways, but why was the devil, you know, why was the devil saying, if you are the son of God? And why didn't Jesus just tell that to him? Hey, no, Jesus said, I am the son of God. No, he quoted the scripture to him. You know, Jesus had that experience, but when he came down to it, Jesus was scripture based. That, that's where his foot was standing on, on what his father had said through the word. That experience is good. Like I said, I'm not against experiences. I uh, pursue them all the time. But you, at, at one point, you have to get rooted in the word. If you just live off of experience, off of feelings, you'll be up and down, up and down. Like uh, example, um, most Christians believe that abortion is wrong or they would say that marriage is just between a man and a woman. But as soon as a little you know, persecution hits, they start backing off. And the reason that is because um, you have not gotten revelation yet in the word of God. You have nothing to stand on in a way. You know, once you read what the Bible says about it, it's like, I didn't say it, but God said it. it it's not me. I'm stand, I'm, this is not my philosophy. I'm standing on what God has said. So it's just, uh, man, it's just so awesome, I guess. And uh, God's word is the ultimate standard. Um, God's word sets you free. John 8, 32, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And John 17, 17 that's, I believe that's just before Jesus went up to heaven. Um, he was on the mount talking to his disciples. And he was praying for them. And one of the things he prayed was, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So in other words, this right here, that's it, people. God wrote a book. He did pretty stinking good. It's a bestseller. <laughs> And he didn't just, and you got to take this thing personal. When you read that, you got to read it like it's written to you. Like when I read Timothy, you know, that was Paul writing to like a, a young man. When I read this, that is God writing to me. That's the Apostle Paul writing to me. So, man, if you just take this personal, you will start getting revelation knowledge of it. So um, I guess what I want to look into today is what, what Jesus said about the word. And Jesus would talk about Jesus would talk about the word a lot, but he wouldn't just, he, he would talk it, how, would, how am I saying this? He would talk about the kingdom, and the kingdom was, and the word was in the kingdom. You know, in the kingdom of God, there's healing, there's miracles, there's salvation. Jesus went about preaching the kingdom of God. So um, I guess before we go there, I just wanted to uh, give a quick testimony um, shortly after I got saved, I had an awesome experience with God. And he just told me that he loved me and that he was pleased with me. And man, ju that just, just hearing that from my father gave me just all kinds of awesome revelation and validation. I went out and I lived a holy life, you know, holier than I have ever dreamed by accident, you know, until up to six months till the experience started running off. But... But anyways, the, the part that I uh, was struggling with was, um, we all know that Jesus loves us, right? That's just any more a cliche anymore. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. But the one that I am pleased with you, that's the one, once that experience started wearing off, I'm like, God, how can you be pleased with me when here I'm not performing perfect? And you got to think that this was like a year after I got saved. I didn't have much knowledge of this right here. So I didn't understand how God could say that he loved me and well, I knew he loved me, but I couldn't understand how he was pleased with me. And man, I started getting desperate. I wanted that experience back. 
And um, I started getting in the Word, and what really changed me radically was Mike did an event here at the time, it was called Freedom, Freedom Weekend, now it's called Free to Live. But I went to that, and um, Mike's, Mike's just, he just speaks so many truths. And one that really changed me was um, that, that I am not just human, I'm actually a three-part being. I have a body, I have a soul, and I have a spirit. Your body is what you see right here. You know, eventually, that's just going to, whatever, turn back to dust if I don't get raptured. But it's going back to dust. It came from dust, and that's where it's going to go. And your soul, that's being sanctified. That's where the battle is going on in your soul. Your soul has not arrived yet. But your spirit, that's what I want to hit on. If, if you're here today and you're a believer in Christ, your spirit has been perfected. The moment you got saved, boom, God sealed it. Now as he is, actually, I want to give you that verse. Let me start here. If you got born again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And, and if you don't understand the, the, uh, the spirit part of it, you know, after you got the, before you got saved, you might have habits, and afterwards you might still have them. Or before you got saved, you might be chubby. Well, guess what? After that, you're still, you still are. So it's like, what's it talking about? All things have passed away. All things have become new. It's, it's talking about your spirit is what it's talking about. And yes, First John 4, 7, 4 17 says, Love has been perfected among us um, that we may be bold in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Like what? This is saying that as Jesus is, so are we? I'm not like Jesus. You know, if, if you do not get it, that we are a, a three-part three being, you're just going to miss it, and that's how, how I missed it. So anyways, where I'm getting with this is my spirit is perfect, and that's the part that God relates to. You know, the Bible says that we must worship him in truth and spirit. I was trying to approach God in my flesh, you know, in, in whether I did good or not. But let me tell you this, whether you do good or not, your, your holy actions, the good stuff you do, go to church, help your neighbor, tithe, whatever, that did not put the wrath of God at ease. 2 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. A mediator is somebody that, that stands between two opposing parties. And your actions don't stand in the, in the middle of that. And see, I thought that's what was going on, but it's not. It is because of Jesus that God, the wrath of God, has been satisfied. But however, if, if you haven't given your life to Christ, you will, you know, face um, final judgment. But if you've given your life to Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. All praise to the Lord. So, like I said, it was, um, it was already in me, and, and I didn't even know it. It took the Word to show me that, hey, your spirit is perfect. So, let's head over to Mark uh, chapter 4, 26 to 29. And he said, the kingdom of God... It is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle uh, because the harvest has come. So the point Jesus was making here that is that... Um, the kingdom of God is dependent upon the word of God, just how this physical word is dependent upon seeds. You wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a seed. The stuff that you ate this morning, guess what? It didn't come from the grocery store. It came from a seed. City slickers don't really know that stuff, but it comes from a seed. <laughs> but anyways, a seed, a seed is not... Um, um, I don't know what they call it, but, but basically a seed is not the, 
a foam enamel compressed into a cap, so when you put it in water, you know the capsule melts and the enamel just unfolds and becomes big. That's not a seed. If I would have a seed here of a, of a big Douglas fir tree, the seed is not the tree. And, and, you, and some of you might think, oh, I don't know about that. Well, what would happen if I would throw seeds on this carpet right here? They'd get vacuumed up. <laughs> and, and I guess, of course, they won't grow. You know, and, and you throw a seed into an alkali patch, you know, that's like that, that white junk. It's not going to grow. It might grow a little bit, but it's not going to grow. You got a soil problem. The Bible says, the earth yields crops by itself, or at, I believe in Genesis, it says that the earth is the one who brings forth fruit. The seed is masculine, the earth is feminine. So what I'm trying to get is, it's already in the ground. You know, everything comes from ground, you know, minerals or whatever, however that works. When you drop that seed into the ground, it just activates what is already in the ground. If you put a seed in the ground, it'll somehow start drawing all this nutrients and it'll start growing this tree. But it wouldn't have grown if it wasn't already in the ground. You know, elephants, squirrels, trees, like I said, it's already in the ground. And, and it's kind of the same principle. Um, when you got born again, God, boom, God put it in you. So, you, you know, you're talking about, um, um, you know, gift of prophecy. I'm not exactly sure how it worked, worked but after, um, after I got saved, this was probably about the year after, man, I just knew stuff. And then one time I went into a restaurant with a friend and the waitress comes walking up and immediately I felt birthday. And I'm like, this is super weird. So I asked my friend first, I'm like, is it your birthday? And he's like, nope. And the waitress comes back and she's like, is it? and I'm like, is it your birthday? She's like, yes, how did you know? And I'm not kidding, she runs off, gets her other friend, brings her back, and she's like, what can you tell about her? And, and she's like, he's, he's psychic. <laughs> and, and I didn't know much at that time. I'm like, I don't think it's that. You know, whatever that is, that doesn't look good. I, I, I knew just enough. But see, I didn't know what was going on there until, you know, until I got, like I said, in the Bible and started hanging around other believers who discipled me. I believe it's 1 Corinthians where it says that he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. It's in you. It, it, it needs to get activated, and the Word of God will do that. It'll show you stuff that you don't even know that you had. Just how when you drop that seed into the ground, God has already put it in there. If he had not put it in there, nothing would happen. Um, so we're going to be in Mark chapter 4 for a little while here. Let's head over to uh, Mark 4, 3, 3 through 13. Still the same chapter, just we're going to um, go to the front of it now. Listen, behold, this sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop, and sprang up, increased and produced, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And that's what I'm praying for you guys today, that... When you get in the Word, you'll get revelation knowledge. And you know, you will sleep by night and rise by day. And you nourish that seed and it will, it will bring forth fruit of itself. You, you will have a harvest. And then he said to them, he who has ears to hear us, let him hear. You know, that, that's another one you can meditate on. He was basically talking about that knowledge thing. Everybody had ears to hear us, but he was saying, do you understand it? Everybody heard it. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. So they didn't understand it. And then uh, if you go to verse 13, this is just awesome right here. When I first heard about this, verse 13 says, um, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So Jesus was basically saying, if you don't get this, how are you going to get the rest of it? That's the, this is the starting point right here. 
Anyways, I, I've heard it say this way. It's, um, it's like the Rosetta Stone. And I'm not talking about like the language program, you know, that helps you talk different languages. Basically, in, in ancient, ancient Egypt, they would find artifacts written in, in hieroglyphics, and it was pictures instead of writing, and they couldn't figure out what they meant until they, you know, they found the Rosetta Stone. And it had a text written in two known languages, and then it also had it written in hieroglyphics, so they could take this and match it up, and then they could interpret what they meant. In other words, this is, this is what this uh, parable is right here. The kingdom is God is like a seed, as if a man should go out and scatter seeds. So let's continue reading. Where are we at? at verse 13. Let's go at 14. The sower sows the word. And those are the ones uh, by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So like I said, you kind of have to meditate on that and, and get your own revelation. But I, I think, you know, w one thing I feel like the Holy Spirit was interpreting that for me was <clears throat> it, the way aside is talking about it's hard, it can't penetrate. And it could be that, you know, you could put hardness of heart in here, a hardened heart. And, this, and, one, and I guess a couple of signs of a hardened heart is um, you cease being thankful, you stop glorifying God. In other words, if you look up at the mountains and you just like can't be in awe, you know, I, I know it's not always, but man, I look up at the mountains sometimes, I'm just in awe, like, wow, God. Like, look at what you have done. And you just start thanking him and, you know, giving him all the credit. And, you know, to undo a hardened heart, well, a hardened heart, well, guess what? You just start being thankful and start glorifying God. Um, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. So this is kind of what, what I was talking about earlier, with Christians, you know, not being able to make a, a strong stand. When tribulation arises because of the word, they stumble. Because they had no root in themselves. They hadn't let the word of God take a, a root and revelation in them. But also, this is just awesome. If you go to, I read the Bible through the Bible, and, you know, not from my phone. And it is very suspicious and funny sometimes. When you go sit down and you read the Bible, all of a sudden you get all kinds of distractions. And you start noting down how many there are. Like, like I'll sit down and, and I'll start like getting revelation of something just when it gets good. All of a sudden, oh, I, I got to get up and order something from Amazon. Or I just remembered I got to send this invoice out. Or I need to call this friend. Or, oh, yeah, the, the laundry is done. I throw it in the dryer. And, and it's funny how that, that just comes up. And, and, and I believe it's the enemy. He's trying to steal the word from you. Just, just, when, just when you get this excitement, you jump up, you, uh, we jump up sometimes. It happens to me so many times. He pulls something shiny past you. You go chasing after it and just swallow it hook, line, and sinker. And then the next day, a couple of days after, you can't even remember what you read. Just when it was getting good. I'm telling you, start paying attention to it. You'll, you'll know what I mean. And um, where are we at here? Oh, moving on to the thorns. <laughs> now, these are the ones sown among thorns, and they are the ones who hear the word, so they hear it. And the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and desires of, for other things enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. You know, I, I've experienced that a lot. I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a contractor, so I get to work around other people sometimes, and, and just for... I, I, can't, I don't have time to get into all like the detail or all the example how the enemy goes around, you know, choking the word out. But, but he does it by, uh, by just putting useless information into our life. Like get on YouTube, you know, watch video after video, all just useless information. Or for me, it, it was, um, like I said, I'd be working next to other, other contractors. And man, they would just listen to radio. And I'm telling you, our radio... You know, the, the, not the Christian station so much, but like, 
but just radio in general, I mean, it's just programmed to get into your head and just completely mess with you. Like, they'll have songs on there singing about, you only call me when you're high, getting drunk, you know, perverting sex outside of marriage. And you start listening to that stuff. I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you, you will find yourself struggling with that. So when I, when, when whatever, when somebody is playing stuff like that, it, it takes wisdom how you go about it. But like, long story short, I don't let it get into my head. I will do something about it. I will not sit there and let that junk, the word sewage, just get into my mind. You know, if you're in a situation, whatever, where you can't drown it out, if it's whatever at a dentist when getting your teeth cleaned or whatever, and there's a song that I don't like, I will, in my mind, start memorizing a verse just to be intentional, because I'm not going to let that in my head. Guard your mind, people. <laughs> It'll help you, I'm telling you. <laughs> so we're going to move in on to um, how do we go about all this? Now what do we do? So we're going to move on to application. And like I said, I'm not saying I have completely figured this out, how to just, you know, let God's word just take root in you. But I have a good place to start anyways. And you can just, you know, get with the Holy Spirit and he can just work with you. Um, get in the word. Fill yourself with the knowledge of word. You know, a lot of times I'll read this and I'll just read a little bit and I'll focus in on it and try to get like a, and get a revelation from it. Other times, I'll just read to just fill my mind with the knowledge of it. And also, I used to read, what well, I still do, I read the Bible before I go to bed a lot. And when I get up the next morning, I re I'll remember what I read the next, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I remember what I read. And there was a time where I didn't do that, and I could see my life wasn't very fruitful. I basically just read the Bible so I could sleep better. Believe it or not, if you read something before you go to bed, it'll help you sleep better. It will. It just kind of somehow relaxes you. So remember what you read, I guess, but you have to, it starts off, but you have to get into the Word of God. That's where it all starts. And John 14, 26, if you want to put that, that if you want to put that verse on the screen, I love it. It says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. This is awesome right here. Has anyone ever had the Holy Spirit bring a, a verse to remembrance? You know, he, he, he just does that. You know, it, it's something that I've had it even happen where, like, I didn't even know, I, rem I, I didn't think I remember that verse again. But sometimes I'll be in a, in a situation, the Holy Spirit will just bring a verse to my mind. Or if I'm praying to somebody, the Holy Spirit will just bring to my remembrance, you know, what I had already read, you know, in, in the Word of God. So fill yourself up with the Word of God. It's good stuff. And, but you can't, uh, you can't stop here. Um, if I would just say, okay, that's it, you know, just get in the Word, I would leave you guys hanging high and dry. John 6, 63 it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. In other words, that's why we have so many people who struggle to understand this. So many, even in the Bible, Nicodemus struggled with it a little bit. When Jesus was talking about the spirit getting born again, he was having the hardest time. He even thought he had to go back into his mother's womb. Like he just, he had nowhere else to go with it. He just couldn't make sense of it. And several other people, you can read about that head, they can understand it. Well, that is why, because those, this thing is written to your heart, not to your, not to your college degree or your PhD or all your degrees. You're not going to understand with, with this. You could have 32 degrees and you'd still be frozen. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is you're not going to understand it with your head. You need, you need the Holy Spirit's help with this. The devil quotes the Bible. In fact, it's kind of dangerous reading this thing without the Holy Spirit. Because then, then we'll make up our own philosophy, start, you know, um, cherry picking stuff. You know, put this here, put this there, and pretty soon you can make it say that. But like I said, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just saying, ask the Holy Spirit for revelation knowledge of the Word of God. And... And I guess with the Holy Spirit, you, you know you have all these different gifts. And one of the gifts is um, 
um, speaking in tongues. I, uh, I got the gift of speaking in tongues, um, I believe it was two years ago, then I stopped doing it, then I read about it again, that we are in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, or verse 21, it says that we are to pray, building ourselves up on, on our most holy faith. So we already have that most holy faith. We just need to start like building ourselves up on it. But praying in tongues, you know, gifts of the spirit of prophecy, I'm not just saying up here, oh, that's only for me. I'm somebody special. Look what I got. No, you all got that. If you're, if you're here today and you're saved, you got that in you already. You need to start using it. It's in you. Amen. <laughs> and then, uh, man, I was excited when Jesus showed me this. This is, um, if you have done all those things, sometimes there's still one more thing left for us to do, and that is to humble ourselves. Um, if you wanted to uh, go to uh, Luke 18, Chapter 18, verse 18, 23. I'm just going to find it in my Bible. Luke 18. Okay, so... Is it, how many in here have heard the story about the rich young ruler? I'm, I just thought I'd read it just so it, it kind of would get refreshed about it. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what should I do to he- inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but, but one, that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. And that right there, that is a lie. He, he lied. He, he didn't keep all the Ten Commandments. He wasn't perfect. Only God is, only Jesus. Jesus was the only human to have ever walked here to live a perfect life. So when Jesus heard these things, he said, you still like one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. So um, was Jesus, you know, saying, oh, the, the money is what had, and money is the evil of him. You know, I'm, like I said, I don't have time to get into it, but um, the, I, I've heard somebody quote this a little while ago, and they said, uh, the root of all evil is money, and that's not true. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. This guy... He was the money dependent and not God dependent. Humility, to put it in its simplest form, is being God dependent. You know, and, and pride, you know, is whatever, an antonym of, of humility. And some people might be like, well, I don't have a pride problem. I have a low self esteem issue. That's pride. That's self centeredness. You're always thinking about yourself. But, but humility is. Um, being focused on God and being reliant on Him. But it's so interesting. You know, um, well, uh, if you back up to verse, in verse 16, they were bringing the kids to Jesus. You know, that was just before the rich young ruler. And they were trying to, hey, don't bring the kids here, leave Jesus alone. He's got bigger fish to fry. And they're like, and Jesus said, no. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Wow. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. So he's not saying to be childish. He's just saying you need to be dependent on them. You know, little kids, you know, just from working in, in the kids' ministry and stuff, their hearts are so pliable. They either believe or they don't believe. They don't have this concept of more faith or less faith. It's either you believe or you don't believe. And, and also, I've heard stories from dads where their kids would jump from the top of the stairs down into their father's arms. That's trust right there, people. Imagine, next time you're standing on top of the stairs, just pretend like you're going to do it. It's a lot scarier than it looks. But anyways, the rich young ruler had to be humble. He came up to Jesus saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? You know, he called him good teacher. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. 
If he would have said, but you are the son of God, boom, he would have been saved. He missed it. And friends, I'm telling you, that's the difference between humility and pride. He, w- he was just seeing what that money could do for him. You know, for some of us, it, you know, it might not be money, but it, there might be a certain part in our life where we're not fully surrendered. But when we just, uh, when we just humble ourselves, I'm telling you, the difference it makes is, is sometimes life and death. You know, we can, just, we can just see it here. But that, that man went away sorrowful. And man, I can't imagine. So anyways, in, in closing... We're just going to, um, as a worship team, we love to have you all worshiping with me. So if you all want to come up here and just fill up this altar and worship, hey, feel free to do it. You can, you know, you can come up here and just, um, you know, if, if you have some gift of the Spirit, I encourage you to come up here, use it. You know, embrace your Heavenly Father. Come up here, have an encounter with Him, draw near to Him, then He will draw even closer to you. So in a way, it's kind of up to you how much of God do you want. You know, if you draw near to Him, he's, I'm telling you, He's going to draw near to you. And, um, and man, He has so many awesome things for us. Like we were saying, the baptism of the, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have that, you need to get it. Otherwise, man, this, this Christian life, it is, it is, you know, there are some people who have the Holy Spirit, but they don't let them operate. I'm telling you, it is so much better with the Holy Spirit. If you just, if you just let Him uh, flow through you. And honestly, really what it is, it's just like a gift card. It's already been paid for by, by Jesus on the cross. He's stretching it out to you right now. The best thing you can use it is just use it. It's been paid for. Just use it up. So I encourage you today, if you guys uh, want to come up here and just... You know, just um, just be in the presence of God, draw near to your heavenly Father. And I actually, I just want to pray that for you right now, heavenly Father. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you that that you are holding us all together in Christ. All things are held together, Lord Jesus. So we just praise you and thank you. I just pray that that the people who are courageous and come up here, Lord Jesus, that their their life will just uh, have a miraculous change, Father God that they, all they knew is they were one way and now they were another way. They go from inconsistent to being consistent, Lord Jesus. And, and I just pray that even if they don't come up here, Father God, you meet them where they are at. You know them, Father God. I just pray that your love, that the Holy Spirit, you would just show them what you have already put in them, Holy Spirit. That you have already loved them, called them by name. So Father, I just pray that, that you would put a burning desire in them right now, Holy Spirit. I ask that you come. If they want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Father, Jesus, baptize them right now if they want to receive it. If they want to receive it, Father, I know you are more than willing to give it to them, Father God. So we just praise you. And I pray that right now you set a... Well, I thank you already that you have set a fire on the inside of them, but I pray that they will not let it go out. I pray that they will just burn with compassion for you, Lord Jesus. So if you guys just want to stand, we're going to go into worship here. I just, I just feel like we just need to take a short time and, um, and just lift up our adoration to him right now. If you guys just want to like, as a congregation, if we just start thanking him right now for what he has already done, loud under your breath however you want to do just start thanking him start singing this song and my heart burns for you and my heart burns for you father may you start something right now in them that's never going to be taken away from them that they will just hold on to it father Whatever comes against them, that it would have roots so deep that nothing can uproot it. Sing your songs to them, people. Even if you don't feel like it, just start singing it out. Just start singing it out. And my heart burns for you. And 
I just pray, I feel like if there's people in here that feel like they're stuck, I just pray that they see you right now, Father, as someone with arms wide open, as the prodigal son who came to himself and said, I will no longer linger, linger here in my mess. I will come home. And Father, as they do that, may you just embrace them. May you embrace them right now with open arms, Father. We pray this, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.